Divide is divide and conquer is what you do. You take a function and divide it into multiple problems, and then you solve them one by one, and then you merge the results all together, and then put it in the end. So, which is why it is one of my favorite algorithms because even I do work in this fashion only. I take a bigger problem and divide it into smaller chunks. So whenever you're going for an interview, whenever you're sitting for internship or your placement cycle, you might have come across to the question like, what are the top ten algorithm that I should learn for reaching my interview? Hi guys, Naman this side. I'm a former intern at Microsoft and will be soon joining Microsoft as an SD this year. Today we are going to answer top ten algorithm from my side that I want you guys to learn. If you have not yet yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel so that you get notification for more awesome videos that we have lined up for you guys. So let's start the video directly and dive into the first algorithm that I, that I want you guys to learn. The first and the four, the most important algorithm that I must say is dynamic programming. So it is a strategy of optimizing recessive calls, recessive functions by eliminating recursive calling. I know you guys must be like um, DP is so hard, uh, recursion is very easy, but DP is so hard, and I'm very Um, I'm like I'm not acquainted to DP very much, so please guys, DP is very important because in this what you what you do is you do, you try to minimize the calls by storing some values. What we do is whenever we have whenever we have a function, whenever we have recursive calls, you might have seen uh, there are certain things that come again and again. There's there's some part that you call multiple times, so it can be greatly improved by using DP. and how can we reduce it the recursiveness can be removed by storing uh, results of the previous problem of the previous sub function that we called so that they do not get called multiple times what we try to do is we try to save the state for example you, you might have seen the question fibonacci numbers in fibonacci numbers what we do is we try to say we try to add up the previous two states number for example if we talk about the function the fibonacci fibonacci function so uh, that is fn equals to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2 So let's take an example over here. If you're talking about Fibonacci five, right? F I B uh, in five. So what do you what do you do is you call F I B four plus F I B three, right? So in this F I B four, you're going to call to F I B three and F I B two. So when you will see you're calling fifth three and fifth four, uh, fifth three two times in fifth call also in the fourth calls also. So you can see there multiple times calling. You can efficiently reduce it by using D P. You can store the value of F I B three in some data structure. For example, it can be an array. It can be uh, anything. So in D P, you're gonna use some data structure to store uh, values of the values of the results of the previous sub function that you called, and it can be achieved very easily. And you can reduce your time complexity very drastically. For uh, for example, you can reduce exponential time complexity to just linear or just quadratic time complexity, which is huge difference when I talk about this, guys. So if you're going to call uh, Fibonacci 50 you you're going to crash your program because it is very it is exponential if you're going to do it directly using your sim, sim, I mean the basic uh, recursive call but you can do it very fast if you're going to try dp so dp is the first thing that i want you guys to learn and there are multiple problems that you can do using dp that there's matrix chain multiplication there's ugly numbers there's fibonacci numbers the added distance problems and lots and lots of the second algorithm that comes is is binary search so as the name suggests searching algorithms are very good searching algorithm i i think this is one of the most uh, beautiful and the most important things when you when it comes to programming I'm not to- going to talk about linear search, but as you can see, linear search. What you what you guys used to do is you guys to you guys had to travel to whole data structure. For example, if you're talking about an array of hundred size, then in linear uh, linear search, what you guys do is you go to all the hundred elements and check. But when it comes to binary search, binary search has some certain conditions that you're gonna that the array should be sorted, right? The array should be sorted. then you can ensure whether you need to go to the left part or to the right part for example if you if you have a sorted array and there's a there's a mid right for example you have 1 2 3 4 5 right what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the mid the mid will come out to be 3 1 plus 5 by 2 3 and let's say your search key is 2 then what you are going to do is you are going to compare your search search key and your mid 
If it comes to the left, then you're just going to search to the left part. For example, if the search key is two and mid is three, then it makes sure that we go on the left part only. And then I know I don't have to do anything with the right part. For example, in one, two, three, four, five, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do anything with four and five. I can just leave them. I can just search to the left part. So in binary search, what you try to do is you, you reduce your calls. What you do is you just get rid of some part of the array and you don't go and check into it. So this is how you can reduce your time complexity from order of n to order of log n. And this is very beautiful thing. I mean, this is very important to where to use binary search. Whenever there is sorted array, just think of binary search. The third algorithm that comes to my mind is merge sort. Uh, from merge sort, again, this is a sorting algorithm and it works on the principle divide and conquer. What is divide and conquer? Divide and, is, divide and conquer is what you do. You take a function and divide into multiple problems and then you solve them one by one. Those, those multiple smaller chunks, you solve them one by one and then you merge the results all together and then put it in the end. This is how you... Uh, I mean, calculate the result. So merge sort, what, what it does is it divides the array in half and calls sorting function or whatever function in those particular halves and then use a merge function to combine the value of, of both these sub problems. And then this is how you generate your result. The time complexity of merge sort is order of n log n and it is one of the most beautiful sorting algorithm, not because uh, uh, the complexity, but the algorithm is very beautiful and you're going to use this into multiple problem. For example, there is a problem in competitive programming inversion count, calculate inversion counts. So in inversion count calculation, there is, this is a good application to, um, I mean, there's, there's a good application of merge sort and you can use merge sort in it. And this is how you can just call uh, the function. And this is how you can call the in inversion counts and calculate it. So merge sort is very beautiful algorithm. Uh, in my perspective, as you divide the problem into smaller chunks and then you conquer something, you do something and then overall you merge the overall, overall you merge the smaller chunks to get a particular output. So which is why it is one of my favorite algorithms because even I do work in this fashion only I take a bigger problem and divide it into smaller chunks. Coming on to the fourth algorithm is depth first search. So as the name suggests, depth first search, you're going into depth and then you're searching something. So it is a searching algorithm and searching process starts from a node and you, it goes all the way down, all the way down to the leaf node in the left subtree. And then you can just after uh, checking all the nodes in the left subtree, you backtrack and then go on to the right. So what we do is we just first complete the left subtree. For example, there are just two subtree for let's say it is a binary tree. In binary tree, you just have left uh, left child and the right child. What you do in depth uh, depth first search is you first you're gonna complete whole left subtree, like every node in the left subtree, whatever levels are, there are. For example, there are hundred nodes in the left subtree. Let's say for an example, you're going to complete searching algorithm on the left subtree, and then you're going to backtrack again to the node, and then you're going to do on on the right. But the issue in DFS is, let's say there's some kind of cycle in the left subtree, then you're gonna hit multiple nodes multiple times. For example, let's say there's a cycle in the left subtree, then you're going to be involved in that cycle and you're gonna remain in that forever. So this is why there is a, I mean, this is a bad case uh, for cyclic trees. You can't use depth for search in it. And the time complexity, when you talk about the time complexity is order of V plus E, the number of edges and vertices, vertices, and you're gonna check everything. So. Uh, you'll have to go to every edge, you'll have to go to the vertex. So this is depth for search. You go into the depth until the leaf node, whenever leaf node is, uh, I mean, you, have, you met the leaf node, you're going to backtrack and then you're going to go on the right side. On the same note, there's one more uh, algorithm that is breadth for search. As the name suggests, you're going into the breadth. So it is also again a searching algorithm in graphs or trees, whatever you call like. Uh, it is just like DFS, but it works in another, another fashion. Instead of traveling all leaves into the left subtree and then searching onto the right, in this what it do is we traverse the level. For example, there is a node and it has a left and right. There are multiple nodes in the left subtree. Let's not care about it. And multiple nodes in the right subtree. But what we do is we travel level by level. For example, let's say this is level one in which there are one node. In level two, there are two. And in level three, there are four nodes, for example, we go level by level. So in this, uh, we have a, a good thing that we don't, we are not getting involved in any kind of cycle because we are traveling to all the nodes in that particular level. 
we just level the nodes on the same level right and after completing that particular level you go into the next level it is um, done by using uh, queues queues uh, by queues you uh, do this breadth first search and again the time complexity is order of v plus c coming on to the next algorithm it is hash tables i'm sure you guys are uh, you guys know what are hash tables hash maps in c++ you use unordered maps or ordered maps so hash tables ka, hash tables are very important to store and access things in order of one time the beautiful thing about hash tables are that you can get or store anything in order of one time which you don't get in in any other data structures and you can use a key to access it access it just like arrays what we do is in array we have some kind of indexing right let's let's calculate array 1 let's calculate array 2 let's let's get out array 3 i want array in square bracket 3 so this is how a uh, hash map work we can give uh, certain things to hash map like you can provide it a key and then you can provide it a value it is a key value pair and you can get out things in just order of one com uh, complexity and there's a specific key so you can just update the key whenever you want so it is a very good data structures in terms of accessing accessing and retrieving values quickly so as you can see it is very efficient and there are lot of use case when where hashing comes into place for example uh, if you are going to store frequency of something in frequency storage storing you can use hash maps and storing whether a node is visited in graphs or linked list or whatever data structure that you are working on in visited list you can just use hash map there are multiple use cases in which you can use hash map so there's there's a very good use case in where hash tables can be used so hash tables and algorithms related to hash tables are very much important and you should know this for counting frequencies hash tables are very much important coming on to the seventh algorithm is tree traversal algorithm i'm sure trees is a very vast topic and the most important one when it comes to the interview and the multiple traversal possible in trees so i want you guys to be completely confident in all the tra traversals whether it be pre order traversal whether it be post order traversal whether it be in order traversal because traversal in tree is one of the most important topic and it can be given in your interview interview also it can be asked in interview it can be asked in your online assessment like what is what is the pre order traversal of this tree what so there are three important traversal that i want you guys to learn those are pre order those are post order and in order right so you should always do these kind of traversal and the question related to it are very much important there are multiple questions uh, that can be used and even in the online assessment test tree traversal algorithms are very much important trees is very important topic guys never leave trees um, it it can be a binary tree a binary tree it can be a generic tree but these three traversals are very much important and there are multiple questions related to it it is as well like vertical traversal in which you have to travel like uh in that verticals only so tree traversals please be acquainted with it coming on to the eighth detecting cycles this is a very good question whether it comes to competitive programming whether it comes to normal programming there can be cycles in both the trees and uh, linked list so detecting cycles in graph or linked list is one of the most important topics that i want you guys to learn it can be used in multiple problem for example to find to find whether a graph is acyclic or not whether graph is cyclic or not like for example if you talk about topological sorting topological sorting needs dag dag is what directed acyclic graph so that so in this particular question you need to ask yourself whether this given graph or tree is cyclic or not so when we need to check whether uh, the i mean the graph is cyclic or not you should always know how to detect a cycle and this is very fundamental question that i want you guys to learn detecting cycles in list and linked list or graphs this is the eighth most important algorithm from my side coming onto the ninth is hare and tortoise algorithm for finding midpoint of linked list so i'm sure linked list uh, everyone knows about it like linked list is very much important you can Uh, put multiple nodes in multiple places of memory. They are not contiguous. They are not located in contiguous location. So it comes to our mind like, how can I find mid middle of the linked list uh, very fast? So in this case, what he uses uh, here in Tortoise algorithm, or you can say is slow and fast pointer method. In this, uh, what we do is we make we ch change the fast node by skipping one place, and we use slow pointer just going to the next place. We don't skip anything in the slow pointer, but we skip 
one place in the fast pointer and when the uh, traversal is complete when the, whenever the fast pointer reaches null or fastest next reaches null we we know that mid pointer would have reached in would have reached its midpoint so this is how you can use here in tortoise algorithm or slow and pointer slow and fast pointer technique it is very efficient to find midpoint because it is very fast rather than uh, just storing the values like what which is the midpoint and what is the length you can just go by this method and this is going to find you the midpoint the and the correct midpoint all, all right coming on to the last uh, algorithm that I, that I want you guys to learn is you should always know bit manipulations bit manipulations and bit maskings are very important if you talk about competitive programming because whenever you calculate things in bits it is obviously it is very fast than your normal operations because computer is acquainted to bits like it works in numbers it works in binary numbers binary operations are very fast in computers so i want you guys to learn bit manipulations because bit manipulations are very important like how to set or how to unset ith bit to check whether number is even what you do is n and 1 like n and 1 will check whether the last bit and 1 is giving a zero or not if it is giving zero then it is even if it is giving one then it is odd like there are multiple use case where we can use it even for um, creating powers of two we use one uh, i mean we use bit manipulations and to check power of two and the multiple use cases of bit manipulation there are multiple use case in which you can use dp with bit masking to set or unset bit to flip ith bit there are multiple use cases where you can use bit manipulation but trust me it is very important to use it because it makes your program very efficient and whenever you are whenever you are time packed like you want your operations to uh, run in run in mini, minimal time then bit manipulations are very important because they reduce your time like very efficiently and it is very good algorithm so in all we have discussed 10 top 10 algorithm today starting from binary starting from dynamic dynamic programming then binary search then we came on to merge sort then uh, dfs bfs hash tables detecting cycle here in tortoise algorithm or slow fast point slow fast pointer technique whatever you say and bit manipulations so these algorithms are going to benefit you in in your every interview and the multiple use case of these all algorithms like you can just see a lot of use cases where these algorithm can be used so these are top 10 algorithms from my side and i hope you guys liked it and if not if i'm not included any of your personal favorite algorithm please try to mention in the comments below so that we can just check and we can include it in our next video thank you guys and i hope you guys are all safe please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet subscribed because then we we are doing a lot of work to get good content for you guys and it keeps us motivated as well please uh, please share and uh, like the channel and like the video as well thank you guys